July 16th, 2010, from the stylish high-tech underground studios of Ribbit Media in swampy Warwick, Rhode Island, this is News on Days. <laughs> For July 16th, 2010, this is News Undies. All the news that shouldn't be news. I'm Paul Torville with these headlines. World Cup ends with some team beating some other team. Lindsay Lohan goes to jail. Hope that helps. LeBron James wastes 10 million man hours of television time to say, I choose Miami. Government, BP, shut press out of oil spill site. Oil still welcome. Mel Gibson demonstrates the unifying power of religion. Paul the Octopus. No relation. Hey gang, it's time for Celebrity Birthdays once again. I got my cake hat on. Let's rock. For Saturday the 10th, Don Herbert, dead, and David Brinkley. Who's Don Herbert? Mr. Wizard! For Saturday the 11th, John Quincy Adams, dead, and Yul Brenner, dead. For Monday the 12th, Andrew Wyeth, dead, and Bill Cosby. For Tuesday the 13th, Bob Crane, dead, and Patrick Stewart. For Wednesday the 14th, Woody Guthrie, dead, and Gerald Ford, dead. For Thursday the 15th, Alex Karras and Jesse Ventura. For Friday the 16th, Shoeless Joe Jackson, dead, and Orville Redenbacher, dead. That's Celebrity Birthdays. I'm Paul Torville, and I'm done! We'll have stories in detail right after this. <laughs> Look, how about Jingle Bells Holiday Rock? Uh. <laughs> how about you put on your favorite Christmas CD? Hmm? We'll sit down and have um, some cookies, and we'll talk about Christmas like grown-ups. I can't sit down. I'm too excited. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow, Michael Steele, chairman of the Republican National Committee, still has a job. At a recent GOP fundraiser in Connecticut, Steele stated that the current conflict in Afghanistan is a war of Obama's choosing. Steele, it seems, has lost sight of the fact that George W. Bush started the war in 2001. Of course, it's possible the September 11th attacks might have escaped his memory, and since the attacks were the stated cause for the war, it's entirely plausible he fabricated an alternate history in his mind, in which the Twin Towers are still standing, Obama attacked Afghanistan for no reason, and Steele himself is of some use to society. In 1955, Pastor Robert Schuler opened the Garden Grove Community Church. His first services were conducted in a rented drive-in theater. By late 1961, Schuler had built a $3 million complex just two miles from Disneyland. In 1975, he began planning for an even more grandiose church, which would be dubbed the Crystal Cathedral. Schuler showed he had, arguably, more faith than the Pope when his architect told him, You can't make a cathedral with glass walls and a glass ceiling in an earthquake zone. Schuler simply told him to hire engineers who could do the impossible, then remove the word impossible from his dictionary. Not sure what that implies, but... The building ended up costing $18 million. Seen from the inside, the Crystal Cathedral seems more like the Steel Trust Cathedral, but whatever. In any event, at 84 years old, I'd say it's time for Schuler to pass the torch before all his kids die off. Mel Gibson. Memo to M. Night Shyamalan. Three years of hype for this? The Last Airbender is a heavily special affected and fairly expensive to make movie, which in nearly two weeks of wide release in the U.S. has failed to make back its budget. 
Critics have almost universally panned this latest in a surprisingly long series of flops from this one-time, can-do-no-wrong director. Panned really doesn't capture the forcefulness with which this flick has been rejected. Hurled in a rough burlap sack full of rocks and cat diarrhea out the window of a speeding car over the side of a bridge into the Ganges would seem more accurate. Summing up, it was not well received. Over the years, large corporations have tried to develop ways to control their public image, particularly when their accidental or intentional misdeeds could stand to negatively impact them. Recent events involving BP, Apple, and others have raised the question of how much overt control should a company have over whether dissenting voices get airtime. Here are Pig and Sheep with their thoughts. Authorities are always right, except when it comes to taxes. Taxes are bad. Companies and governments should be free to say anything without criticism or scrutiny, or stop me from saying anything they want. How else are we going to maintain order and support the tissue of lies that is our growth-based consumer economy? Um, well, uh, it gets so close to reality. Uh, there, I mean, okay, there's libel. And that's illegal. If I do something wrong, it is at least up to the press to expose my wrongdoing. If you have an opinion about something I've done wrong, you're free to express it. For me to suppress your opinions is wrong. For the government to collude with me to try to cover my wrongdoing is just plain rotten. That's what Pig and Sheep think. What are your thoughts? Email them to ovcomments at newsundies.com. And now, here's Moose Weintraub with a Sports Half Minute. Moose Weintraub Sports Half Minute. It's a whole half minute of sports. 30 seconds of sports. Moose Weintraub Sports Half Minute. Here's your Sports Half Minute. I'm Moose Weintraub. In Scotland, if you can't toss a kyber, you're not worth your sporing. Thanks, Moose. Always a great report from Moose. Consumer Reports doesn't like the iPhone 4. Despite loving the phone's video capabilities, the publication is reserving its recommend rating. In testing, the Consumer Advocacy Organization has determined that the reception issues reported by iPhone 4 users are due almost exclusively to a bad antenna design, which requires users to hold the phone in a particular way to ensure decent reception. It's been rumored that Apple's considered spinning the antenna-required posture as an undocumented feature as some sort of modified yoga form. We'll have your exclusive past cast weather and the final news roundup right after this. You'll notice that when you watch News Undies, I'm always wearing a shirt from the Ursus Pacifica Sketch Cave. Well, now you can too. You can help support News Undies by going to the Ursus Pacifica Sketch Cave and getting some kitsch. And now, here's your exclusive past cast weather for the week ending Friday, July 16th, 2010. In the Appalachians, it was sunny and cool, then sunny and hot. Just ask Mark Sanford. The southeast saw scattered thunderstorms, then sunny, cool conditions. Florida saw more thunderstorms and cooler temps than usual for this time of year. And that's your exclusive past cast weather. Christina Millian? 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 A teenage cousin of Brazilian soccer star Bruno Fernandes das Torres de Souza, known to his fans as Bruno. Is it too late to make a Bruce Willis playing the harmonica gag here? Moving on. Eliza Samundio, 25, who's been missing for at least a month, was reportedly Bruno's mistress. A 17-year-old cousin of Bruno's turned over evidence and testimony suggesting that Samundio had been strangled, chopped up, and fed to dogs, And what the dogs wouldn't eat was buried in concrete. Bruno, his wife, and several friends are now in police custody in connection with Samundio's disappearance. Killed her? Okay, I mean, it's not okay, but... Jealous wife enlists friends to kill husband's lover? 
it's a fairly run-of-the-mill murder story. Chopped her up and fed her to dogs? I guess that just goes to further the point that they take everything seriously in Brazil. Should have guessed that from their famed bikini area grooming technique. And finally, and I do mean finally, we all saw this coming, didn't we? The World Cup is finally over. Spain won. Great. Can we finally, at long last, smash, burn, and bury every last vuvuzela, as well as the molds used to make them? Seriously. Please? Well, that's all for this edition of News Undies. Remember, News Undies is a weekly show, and we'll be back on Friday, July 23rd with fresh undies. If you see news that shouldn't be news, email your story tips to undies at newsundies.com. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm Paul Torville. After that, I might be trying to connect myself in some historical way to George Steinbrenner. Don't know why.